This is Work Life India. I am the first woman in my family to be a working woman. We discuss work, life and everything in between. Who is Facebook sharing my data with? We look at all things to do with money, the work we do and the lives we lead. When I quit this job and I started this, I mean, it wasn't all hunky-dory. We tackle the questions needing answers. Problem now is that fake news kills. Work Life India. Join the conversation here on BBC World News. Now here's the science bit. Ready. Could a bendy phone be the future? There really is no driver. Oh, I feel better for that. Click on BBC World News. Liberated, independent, but sexy and desirable, the myth of the French woman is very much alive. But what happened in France when the Me Too movement came along? Join me, Helen Daufers, for the inside story here on BBC World News. Thailand gets to elect a government this Sunday for the first time since the military seized power five years ago. But the coup leaders want to hold on to their power and they've fixed the electoral system in their own favour. So can the soldiers still be beaten at the ballot box? I'll be reporting from Thailand throughout this week here on BBC World News. I'm Katty Kane, Washington. I'm Christian Fraser in London. Let's start with the European Union. Brexit. Russian interference. Donald Trump's Twitter feed. Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, we'll move on. I think there are going to be a lot of questions now. Yeah. I think it's going to be fascinating to watch. We're nearly out of time. This is a big deal. Beyond 100 Days on BBC World News. Hello, this is The Business Briefing. I'm Ben Plan. Presidential pals as Brazil's right-wing leader Jair Bolsonaro hits it off with Donald Trump. How are things back at home? We'll take a closer look at the Brazilian economy. And game on. For Google, the tech giant launches its new streaming platform called Stadia. And on the markets, Asian shares have slipped from six-month highs as investors took profits ahead of a policy decision by the US Federal Reserve on Wednesday. Hello. Far-right Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro made his first visit to Washington to meet US President Donald Trump at the White House on Tuesday. They struck initial agreements on agricultural trade, better access for American wheat and pork exports to Brazil, also possibly restarting sales of Brazilian fresh beef to the US. But how is the Brazilian economy doing? Well, Latin America's largest economy got off to a bad start in 2019. GDP grew by just 0.1% in the fourth quarter. That's down from 0.5% in the three months to September. Mr. Trump may want closer economic ties with Mr. Bolsonaro, but China is currently Brazil's top trading partner. The economy minister, Paulo Guedes, said Brazil will not undermine its trade with China. The most pressing challenge is social security reform, namely pensions. It would see Brazilians paying into private pension pots and would replace the public system, which offers a guaranteed package of retirement benefits. Well, Eduardo Gomez, Senior Lecturer in International Development at King's College London, uh, joins me. Good to have you with us on, uh, on the business briefing, Eduardo. So, um, for those uh, back in Brazil watching the pictures of the two presidents meeting, uh, what they've agreed, what practical effect is that going to have for people back in Brazil? Sure. The practical effects is that uh, Brazilians are going to be happy that you know, relations are being restored with the U.S. Uh, there may be some more job opportunities, some more uh, you know, import of beef. Uh, that has been you know, one of the ideas of, through these new trade relationships. But there also could be some backlash against the government, uh, against uh,